and Israel's Iron Dome's defense system intercepting missiles above the city. Israeli army has meanwhile released video to show an alleged Hamas tunnel near a school in northern Gaza. The army said that the tunnel was five meters deep. They also released videos showing troops carrying out missions to neutralize infrastructure in what was said to be the area surrounding Jabalia in northern Gaza. While these are the scenes unfolding in Gaza, this is the scale of devastation, both in southern and northern Gaza. The visuals on your screens right now are of Gaza City in the north and Khan Yunus in the south. And both of these cities, cities have come under intense bombardment since the fighting resumed. Now, families were seen fleeing their homes as they got struck by Israeli strikes. مش حد يخاف عليها دورنا راحت وابنك راحت واموالنا راحت والولاد الولاد اللي استشهدوا راحوا واللي ماتوا راحوا والمكسحين اللي في المستشفيات هذول بعدهم ما بقودين سنين ايه علاش علاش احنا بدنا نبكي ايش دور نبكي عليه وبقول لك ايش جايين قدام في الطريق وين الدعم وينه وينه this is the Al Shifa. This is the Al Hali. Pardon me. This is the Al Hali Hospital in Gaza City, and it has often been targeted by the Israeli forces since the beginning of the war. Dead bodies have been arriving here by truck, car, and even horse-drawn cart. <laughs> What you see is the devastation in southern Gaza and after two months of war, civil order is up for a toss. People have now resorted to loot eight trucks that have been arriving in the territory. People were seen climbing on top of trucks transporting humanitarian supplies. And as per reports, only two fuel trucks and 58 trucks were able to enter Gaza on Saturday. Israel says it has pledged to allow humanitarian aid to enter Gaza, however, has urged civilians to evacuate to safe areas as it will continue hitting targets. Now, while the attacks continue, Israel has started considering post-war arrangements. A senior advisor has told Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that the country will seek a security envelope with special zones that will prevent Hamas from being positioned on its border after the war in Gaza is over. So we have spoken that in the framework of the post-conflict relationships, Israel will, has to, will have to have a security envelope. We can never, allen, uh, never again allow terrorists uh, to cross the border and butcher our people the way they did on October 7th. A U.S. destroyer and several commercial ships operating in the Red Sea came under drone and ballistic missile attacks. And this is according to the U.S. military as it marks the most significant escalation of a weeks-long military attack on ships operating in those waters. Now, according to the American officials, the USS Kearney, a Navy destroyer, struck a drone that was in the direction of the ship. They say it was launched from a Houthi-controlled part of Yemen. At roughly the same time, the Unity Explorer, a Bahamas-flagged UK-owned and operated bulk cargo ship, came under a ballistic missile attack that landed near the ship. The commercial ship sent a distress call and the Kearney moved towards the ship in response. While assessing the damage on the commercial ship, a, a Panamanian flagged bulk carrier named MV number no. 9 reported damage but no casualties caused by the missile from Yemen. While the MV Sophie 2, which also flies Panama's flag, said it was struck as well but suffered no significant harm. In a statement, the Yemeni armed forces confirmed the attack, saying it launched a missile towards the Unity Explorer and a drone at another commercial cargo ship, saying the ships were Israeli and that attacks on the country's vessels 
would continue until the Israeli aggression against their brothers in the Gaza Strip does not stop. نفذت القوات البحرية في القوات المسلحة اليمنية بعون الله تعالى صباح يومنا هذا عملية استهداف لسفينتين إسرائيليتين في باب المندب وهما سفينة يونتي إكسبلورر وسفينة نمبر ناين حيث تم استهداف السفينة الأولى بصاروخ بحري والسفينة الثانية بطائرة مسيرة بحرية Shifting focus now to the latest coming in from the Israel-Hamas war. It is the third day since the truce collapsed. Bombing continues in Gaza. Both Israel and Hamas have ruled out negotiations for now as bodies line up in the Palestinian enclave. Israel says it has pulled back mediators from Qatar, while Hamas says that another exchange of prisoners and hostages will take place only after a permanent ceasefire. And as we speak, relentless airstrikes continue to hit Gaza. Flares and explosions lit up the Gaza skyline as fighting stretched to third day after the truce collapsed. Over 240 Palestinians have been killed as per Hamas since then. And rockets have also been fired from Gaza towards Israel. Israeli officials say that hundreds and thousands were running for cover as sirens sound across central Israel on Saturday. Videos show how people are taking shelter for safety and Israel's Iron Dome defense system intercepting missiles above the city. Israeli army has meanwhile released video to show an alleged Hamas tunnel near a school in northern Gaza. And the army said that the tunnel was five meters deep. They also released videos showing troops carrying out missions to neutralize infrastructure in what was said to be the area surrounding Jabalia in northern Gaza. While these are the scenes unfolding in Gaza, this is the scale of devastation, both in southern and northern Gaza. And the visuals on your screens right now are of Gaza City in the north and Khan Yunus in the south. Both of these cities have come under intense bombardment since the fighting resumed. Families were seen fleeing their homes as they got struck by Israeli strikes. مش حاجة نخاف عليها دورنا راحت وأبلاغنا راحت وأموالنا راحت والولاد الولاد اللي استشهد راحوا واللي ماتوا راحوا والمكسحين اللي في المستشفيات هذول بعدهم مفقودين سنين إيه علاش علاش احنا بدنا نبكي إيش دور نبكي عليه وبقول لك إيش جايين قدام في الطريق وين الدعم وينه وينه this is the Al-Hali hospital in Gaza City. It has often been targeted by the Israeli forces since the beginning of the war. Dead bodies have been arriving here by truck, car and even horse-drawn car. What you see is the devastation in southern Gaza. After two months of war, civil order is up for a toss. People have now restored to loot aid trucks that have been arriving in the territory. People were seen climbing on top of trucks transporting humanitarian supplies. And as per reports, only two fuel trucks and 58 trucks were able to enter Gaza on Saturday. Israel says it has pledged to allow humanitarian aid to enter Gaza. However, has urged civilians to evacuate to safe areas as it will continue hitting targets. Now, while the attacks continue, Israel has started considering post-war arrangements. A senior advisor has told Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that the country will seek a security envelope with special zones that will prevent Hamas from being positioned on its border after the war in Gaza is over. And on to a cut news coverage of the Israel-Hamas war in the latest Israel and Hamas continue to trade fire. Both the sides have refused calls to extend the truce. Israel says it has pulled back mediators from Qatar, while Hamas says that another exchange of prisoners and hostages will only take place after permanent ceasefire. 
As we speak, relentless airstrikes continue to hit Gaza. Flares and explosions lit up the Gaza skyline as fighting stretched to the third day after the truce collapsed. At least 240 Palestinians have been killed as per Hamas since then. Rockets have also been fired from Gaza towards Israel. The Israeli officials say that hundreds and thousands were running for cover as sirens sound across central Israel on Saturday. Videos show how people are taking shelter for safety and Israel's Iron Dome defense system intercepting missiles above the city. Israeli army has meanwhile released video to show an alleged Hamas tunnel near a school in northern Gaza. The army said that the tunnel was five meters deep. They also released videos showing troops carrying out missions to neutralize infrastructure in what was said to be the area surrounding Jabalia in northern Gaza. While these are the scenes unfolding in Gaza, this is the scale of devastation both in southern and northern Gaza. The visuals on your screens are of Gaza City in the north and Khan Yunus in the south. Both of these cities have come under intense bombing since the fighting resumed. Well, families were seen fleeing their homes as they got struck by the Israeli strikes. And this is the Al-Shifa hospital in Gaza City. It has often been targeted by the Israeli forces since the beginning of the war. And dead bodies have been arriving here by truck, car and even horse-drawn cart. What you see at the moment is the devastation in southern Gaza. After two months of war, civil order is up for a toss. People have now resorted to loot eight trucks that have been arriving in the territory. People were seen climbing on top of trucks, transporting humanitarian supplies in Gaza. As per reports, only two fuel trucks and 58 trucks were able to enter Gaza on Saturday. Israel says it has pledged to allow humanitarian aid to enter Gaza. However, it has urged civilians to evacuate to safe areas as it will continue hitting the targets in Gaza. And so as soon as the fighting wraps up in northern Gaza, we will continue to destroy all of Hamas's terror infrastructure in Gaza so they can never again hurt our people. We've published an evacuation map, evacuation routes to towards safe areas, and we're urging civilians to continue going to these areas, and we're committed to continuing to work with international agencies to ensure the continuation of humanitarian aid, of food, of water, of medicine and shelter to the people of the Gaza Strip. While the attacks continue, Israel has started mulling post-war arrangements. A senior advisor has told the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that the country will seek a security envelope with special zones that will prevent Hamas from being positioned on its border after the war in Gaza is over. So we have spoken that in the framework of the post-conflict relationships, Israel will, has to, will have to have a security envelope. We can never, allen, uh, never again allow terrorists uh, to cross the border and butcher our people the way they did on October 7th. And we can't take our eye off the ball. And so in a post-conflict reality, a post-Hamas reality, Israel will maintain for the foreseeable future overall security control. A U.S. destroyer and several commercial ships operating in the Red Sea came under drone and ballistic missile attacks. And this is according to the U.S. military as it marks the most significant escalation of a weeks-long military attack on ships operating in those waters. Now, according to American officials, the USS Kearney, a Navy destroyer, struck a drone that was in the direction of the ship. They say it was launched from a Houthi-controlled part of Yemen. At roughly the same time, the Unity Explorer, a Bahamas-flagged UK-owned and operated bulk cargo ship, came under a ballistic missile attack that landed near the ship. The commercial ship sent a distress call and the Kearney moved towards the ship in response. In a statement, 
The Yemeni armed forces confirmed the attack, saying it launched a missile towards the Unity Explorer and a drone at another commercial cargo ship, saying that the ships were Israeli and that attacks on the country's vessels would continue until the Israeli aggression against their brothers in the Gaza Strip does not stop. And to talk more on the latest developments, we've now been joined by Charles Kupchin, who is the Senior Director for European Affairs on the staff of the National Security Council, NSC, in the Barack Obama administration. Thank you so much for joining us from beyond, Mr. Kupchin. Good to be with you. Right now, Mr. Kupchin, the situation is only worsening as we speak. Around 700 Palestinians have been killed in the last 24 hours. Israel has announced that it is expanding its ground operations in the whole of Gaza Strip, while Hamas has been staunch uh, that there will be no talks until bombing on the Gaza Strip stops. How do you assess the current situation in Gaza? Uh, do you think that there will be any sign of the truce restarting now? Well, I think now that we have seen the fighting begin again, it will likely continue mm. for another significant amount of time. Both the Israelis uh, and Hamas are claiming that they were the ones responsible for uh, letting this truce lapse. Apparently, Hamas didn't come forward with the names that they had promised. But the bottom line here is that Israel has moved from attacking positions in the northern part of Gaza to the southern part of Gaza. It has been trying to distribute various kinds of instructions about where civilians can go to get safe haven. But clearly, civilians are continuing to suffer and to die. We heard talk of some kind of safe zone along the Mediterranean Sea in the south of Gaza, unclear whether civilians are moving there and, and if they do move there, whether they will be safe. So unfortunately, I think we're entering what will be another very significant period of bloodshed and fighting now spreading from north to south. More bloodshed and more fighting. Uh so I also wanted to get your opinion on this, just taking further from your first answer. Now, there are renewed calls to protect the civilians in Gaza. Now, with the IDF launching this next stage of attacks, they've gone through northern Gaza. Now it's southern Gaza. When they were attacking northern Gaza, civilians were asked to move towards the south. Now that they're attacking southern Gaza, where do the civilians go? And is there any chance of another truce? Well, it's a, it's a great question because they can't turn around and go back to the north mm. because many of the places that they would go to mm. have been destroyed. Homes apartment buildings, schools, UN centers. So clearly the, this is a, a worsening situation. The humanitarian crisis gets worse. Hospitals are running out of fuel, of medicine and equipment. No question that behind the scenes, the United States, Egypt, Qatar, other parties are working hard to get another truce. Given the dynamics in Israeli politics, I don't think you'll see another truce until there is more degrading of Hamas leadership, more degrading of the Hamas military infrastructure. Israel talks about eliminating Hamas. I don't think that is a realistic war aim because mm -hmm. Hamas is a social movement as well as a military organization. So unfortunately, I think we're going to see it a few more weeks of fighting, more death and destruction before we get another significant pause in an effort to end the fighting. Right, Mr. Kupchin, uh, speaking of the recent attack by Yemen's Houthis on commercial vessels in the Red Sea, talk to us about the growing maritime tensions in the West Asian region. Well, you know, there, there are no silver linings to the war that has broken out between Israel and Hamas. But there is, I think, a reason to be uh, somewhat welcoming of the news that the war has not spread significantly. Yes, we see Hezbollah in Lebanon lobbing missiles into northern Israel. Yes, there has been some exchange of fire between U.S. forces and Iranian proxies in Syria. But the only place where we're, we're seeing escalation is in and around the waters off the coast of Yemen, where the Houthis have launched the missile strikes drone strikes, 
apparently against a, uh, um, a ship, uh, a civilian cargo, and as well as a, a U.S. warship. I don't think that one can expect to see a significant escalation given the distance of Yemen from Gaza. I think one the key here is that uh, Iran seems to be holding back. Iran is the puppet master here. Mm. It's the party that is supporting Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, Syrian militias. Mm. So far, the Iranians don't look like they're edging toward a fight with Israel. But clearly, we need to keep an eye on that. And that's one of the reasons the U.S. has warships off the coast to deter Iran and to deter Iranian proxies from widening the war. Well, uh, there have not been too many incursions beyond uh, the boundaries of Israel and uh, Gaza as far as the war is concerned. But again, there are no silver linings in this ongoing war between the two sides. And here's hoping there's going to be peace at the earliest. Thank you so much for joining in, sir. That was Mr. Charles Kupchin joining us on World DNA. And we are talking about Israel's incessant attacks on the Gaza Strip. At least 700 Gazans have been killed so far in the last 24 hours. Meanwhile, a U.S. destroyer and several commercial ships operating in the Red Sea came under drone and ballistic missile attacks. This is according to the U.S. military as it marks the most significant escalation of a weeks long military attack on ships operating in those waters. Well, according to a statement made by the U.S. Central Command, it confirmed that the attack on the commercial vessels, it said that there were four attacks against three separate commercial vessels operating in international waters in the Southern Red Sea. According to the American officials, the USS Kani, a Navy destroyer, struck a drone that was in the direction of the ship. They say it was launched from a Houthi-controlled part of Yemen. At roughly the same time, the Unity Explorer, a Bahamas flag UK-owned and operated bulk cargo ship, came under a ballistic missile attack that landed near the ship. The commercial ship sent a distress call and the Kani moved towards the ship in response. While assessing the damage on the commercial ship, a flag bulk carrier named MV No. 9 reported damage but no casualties caused by the missiles from Yemen. While the MV Sophie II, which also flies Panama's flag, said it was struck as well but suffered no significant harm. In a statement, the Yemeni armed forces confirmed the attack, saying it launched a missile towards the Unity Explorer and a drone at another commercial cargo ship, saying that the ships were Israelis and that the attacks on the country's vessels would continue until the Israeli aggression against their brothers in the Gaza Strip stops. Take a listen. في القوات المسلحة اليمنية بعون الله تعالى صباح يومنا هذا عملية استهداف لسفينتين إسرائيليتين في باب المندب وهما سفينة يونتي إكسبلورر وسفينة نمبر ناين حيث تم استهداف السفينة الأولى بصاروخ بحري والسفينة الثانية بطائرة مسيرة بحرية وقد جاءت عملية الاستهداف you see, the Red Sea shipping route here, it is one of the busiest in the world. There are thousands of ships that transit through uh, this stretch of water daily. And this map right here will give you an idea of the kind of maritime traffic that is present in those waters, as you can see here. Now, the Red Sea is an, e is, is an important economic artery and is likely to become more so in the coming decades. And this as a result of the large oil reserves throughout the region and also precious metal resources here. And this makes the route critical for the global energy security. Apart from this, more than 10% of global trade, it passes through the Red Sea. The Red Sea here each year, uh, like we've been talking about how it is an important trade pass. Now, most ships sailing from Europe to Asia, they take this route, the Red Sea route, as it is cost effective and crossing two of the 10 most strategic waterways in the world, which are number one, the Bab al-Mandar at the sea southern entrance, here, the Bab al-Mandar, the sea's southern entrance, and number two, 
Egypt's Suez Canal in the north. And starting this broadcast with a continuous coverage of the Israel-Hamas war. Israel Defense Forces are continuing its large-scale airstrikes against Hamas militants in the Gaza Strip. As world leaders attempt to bring both parties back to the negotiating table. In the latest, according to a senior Hamas official, resuming talks with Israel on further exchanges of hostages and prisoners must be tied to a cessation of aggression and a ceasefire. وفي ظل إعاقة الاحتلال التوصل إلى تمديد الهدنة الإنسانية واستئناف واستمرار العدوان النازي على شعبنا فإننا نؤكد أن استمرار مفاوضات أن استئناف مفاوضات تبادل الأسرى مرهون بوقف العدوان ووقف إطلاق النار وقبل ذلك لا حديث عنه well, the Israeli military, on the other hand, uh, says that it has intensified its attack on the Palestinian territory, adding that the militants on every part of the Strip are now on target. And this marks a big escalation in the Israeli offensive since the truce collapse. Before the seven-day pause, the deadliest Israeli operations were limited to northern Gaza. צהל ממשיך ומרחיב את הפעולה הקרקעית מול מרכזי הכובד של חמאס בכל רצועת עזה. בכל רצועת עזה, במקום שיש מרכז כובד של חמאס, צהל פועל. Now, Israel's military chief of staff says that the operation in southern Gaza will match its earlier offensive against Hamas in the northern part of the strip as well. The IDF claims to have killed Hamas's commander of the Shati Battalion with an airstrike in Gaza. They say that the commander, Haitham Kuha Wajari, directed the militants to carry out raids into southern Israel on October 7th. The Israeli Defense Forces further said that since the beginning of the ground offensive, the troops have discovered more than 800 tunnel shafts in the Gaza Strip. The IDF says that around 500 of them have already been destroyed, either by setting off large explosive charges inside or by sealing them. Now, with the attacks intensifying, the humanitarian horror in Gaza is only worsening. Over 2 million Palestinians face death and devastation across the besieged strip. At least 700 Palestinians have been killed in the last 24 hours. And it is one of the highest daily death tolls since the war began on October 7th. From the north to the south, Palestinians in Gaza say that there is nowhere that is safe. The Israeli military targeted the Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza for a second day. The renewed strikes hit the refugee camp on Sunday. Several homes were destroyed, killing dozens of people and more are buried under the rubble as we speak. Meanwhile, the injured people were being rushed to Gaza City's Al-Ahali Hospital as Israel ordered more people in crowded southern Gaza to evacuate. And as you can see on the screens, bodies were lined on the front yard of the hospital even as more bodies were brought in. حقيقة منذ انتهاء الهدنة وبداية العدوان من جديد تلقينا خلال أيام الثلاثة الماضية يعني بما في ذلك هذا اليوم العشرات من الجرحى المصابين المختلفين والمئات من الشهداء في الحقيقة الإصابات هذه المرة أصعب بكثير مما قبل هدنة هذه الإصابات هي قصور معقدة مفتوحة تحتاج إلى تدخل إلى تدخل طبي وعمليات عاجلة كما وصلت عدد كبير من الحالات المصابة في الرأس ومصابة في البطن Thirty-nine Palestinians, including twenty who are badly injured, arrived in Tunisia together with their families on Sunday. They were transported from the Gaza Strip for medical treatment. They had been evacuated through the Rafah border. Another flight is scheduled for Tuesday to bring an additional 160 injured people to Tunisia for treatment. And 
sensing the current situation unfolding in West Asia. The Iranian foreign minister has expressed prospects of the war spilling over in face of the Israeli attacks. ما از رهبران مقاومت در روز گذشته شنیدیم که در صورت ادامه این وضعیت منطقه از طریق مقاومت وارد یک مرحله جدیدی خواهد شد توسعه عمیق جنگ در منطقه کاملا متصور هست و هشدار داده می شود به همه طرف های Top focus in the world DNA is a continuous coverage of the Israel Hamas war. In the latest, the Israel Defense Forces are continuing its large scale airstrikes against Hamas militants in the Gaza Strip. And this is as the world leaders attempt to bring both parties back to the negotiating table. Now, in the latest, according to a senior Hamas official, resuming talks with Israel on further exchanges of hostages and prisoners must be tied to a quote-unquote cessation of aggression and a ceasefire. The Israeli military, on the other hand, says that it has intensified its attack on the Palestinian territory, adding that the militants on every part of the Strip are now on target. And this marks a big escalation in the Israeli offensive since the truce collapsed before the seven-day pause. The deadliest Israeli operations were limited to northern Gaza. Israel's military chief of staff says that their operation in southern Gaza will match its earlier offensive against Hamas in the northern part of the strip. The IDF claims to have killed Hamas's commander of the Shati Battalion with an airstrike in Gaza. Well, they say that the commander, Haitim Khawajwari, directed the militants to carry out raids into southern Israel on October 7th. Now, the Israeli Defense Forces further said that since the beginning of their ground offensive, the troops have discovered more than 800 tunnel shafts in the Gaza Strip. The military also said that around 500 of them have already been destroyed, either by setting off large explosive charges inside or by sealing them. Now, with the attacks intensifying, the humanitarian horror in Gaza is only worsening. Over 2 million Palestinians face death and devastation across the besieged strip. While at least 700 Palestinians have been killed in the past 24 hours. And it is one of the highest daily death tolls since the war began on October 7th. From the north to the south, Palestinians in Gaza say that nowhere is safe. The Israeli military targeted the Jabalia refugee camp again in northern Gaza for a second day. Renewed strikes hit the refugee camp on Sunday. Several homes were destroyed, killing dozens of people. More are buried under the rubble still. Meanwhile, injured people were being rushed to Gaza City's Al-Ahali Hospital as Israel ordered more people in crowded southern Gaza to evacuate. Well, bodies were lined on the front yard of the hospital, even as more bodies were brought in. 39 Palestinians, including 20 who are badly injured, arrived in Tunisia together with their families on Sunday. They were transported from the Gaza Strip for medical treatment. They had been evacuated via the Rafah border crossing into Egypt. And another flight is scheduled for Tuesday to bring an additional 160 injured people to Tunisia for treatment. While seeing the situation unfolding in West Asia, the Iranian foreign minister has expressed prospects of the war spilling over in face of the Israeli attacks on Gaza.
The Israeli Defense Forces are continuing their large-scale airstrikes against Hamas militants in the Gaza Strip as the world leaders attempt to bring both parties back to the negotiating table. Now, in the latest, according to a senior Hamas officials, resuming talks with Israel on further exchanges of hostages and prisoners must be tied to a cessation of aggression and a ceasefire. وفي ظل اعاقه الاحتلال ها التوصل الى تمديد الهدنه الانسانيه واستئناف واستمرار العدوان النازي على شعبنا فاننا نؤكد ان استمرار مفاوضات ان استئناف مفاوضات تبادل الاسرى مرهون بوقف العدوان ووقف اطلاق النار وقبل ذلك لا حديث عنه the Israeli military, on the other hand, says it has intensified its attack on the Palestinian enclave, adding that militants on every part of the strip are now on target. This marks a big escalation in the Israeli offensive since the truce collapse. Before the seven-day pause, the deadliest Israeli operations were limited to the northern part of Gaza. צה"ל ממשיך ומרחיב את הפעולה הקרקעית מול מרכזי הכובד של חמאס בכל רצועת עזה. בכל רצועת עזה, במקום שיש מרכז כובד של חמאס, צה"ל פועל. Israel's military chief of staff says that their operation in southern Gaza will match its earlier offensive against Hamas in the northern part of the strip. The IDF claims to have killed Hamas commander of the Shati battalion with an airstrike in Gaza. They say that the commander Haitham Khwajiri directed militants to carry out raids into southern Israel on the 7th of October. The Israeli Defense Forces further said that since the beginning of their ground offensive, the troops have discovered more than 800 tunnel shafts in the Gaza Strip. The military said that around 500 of them have already been destroyed, either by setting off large explosive charges inside or by sealing them. With the attacks intensifying, the humanitarian horror in Gaza is only worsening. Over 2 million Palestinians face death and devastation across the besieged strip. At least 700 Palestinians have been killed in the past 24 hours. It is one of the highest daily death tolls since the war began on October 7th. From the north to the south, Palestinians in Gaza say nowhere is safe now for them. The Israeli military targeted the Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza for a second day. Renewed strikes hit the refugee camp on Sunday. Several homes were destroyed, killing dozens of people. More are buried under the rubble. Meanwhile, injured people were being rushed to Gaza City's Al Ali Baptist Hospital as Israel ordered more people in crowded southern Gaza to evacuate. Bodies were lined on the front yard of the hospital, even as more bodies were brought. العشرات من الجرحى المصابين المختلفين والمئات من الشهداء في الحقيقة الإصابات في هذه المرة أصعب بكثير مما قبلهم أغلب الإصابات هي قصور معقدة مفتوحة تحتاج إلى تدخل إلى تدخل طبي وعمليات عاجلة كما وصلت على الكثير من حالات المصابة في الرأس ومصابة في البطن وغيرها وهي كل حالات تحتاج إلى تدخل لإنقاذ الحياة. 39 Palestinians, including 20 who are badly injured, arrived in Tunisia together with their families on Sunday. They were transported from the Gaza Strip for medical treatment. They had been evacuated via the Rafah border crossing into Egypt. Another flight is scheduled for Tuesday to bring an additional 160 injured people to Tunisia for treatment. Seeing the situation unfolding in West Asia, the Iranian foreign minister has expressed prospects of the war spilling over in face of the Israeli attacks. در صورت ادامه این وضعیت 
منطقه از طریق مقاومت وارد یک مرحله جدیدی خواهد شد Shifting our focus now to our ongoing coverage of the Israel-Hamas war. In the latest, the Israel Defense Forces are continuing its large-scale airstrikes against Hamas militants in the Gaza Strip. All this as world leaders attempt to bring both the parties back to the negotiating table. According to a senior Hamas official, resuming talks with Israel on further exchanges of hostages and prisoners must be tied, and I'm quoting here, cessation of aggression. and a ceasefire. وفي ظل اعاقه الاحتلال ها التوصل الى تمديد الهدنه الانسانيه واستئناف واستمرار العدوان النازي على شعبنا فاننا نؤكد ان استمرار مفاوضات ان استئناف مفاوضات تبادل الاسرى مرهون بوقف العدوان ووقف اطلاق النار وقبل ذلك لا حديث عنه. The Israeli military, on the other hand, says it has intensified its attack on the Palestinian territory, adding that the militants on every part of the Strip are now on target, and this marks a major escalation in the Israeli offensive since the truce collapsed. Before the seven-day pause, the deadliest Israeli operations were limited to northern Gaza. צה"ל ממשיך ומרחיב את הפעולה הקרקעית מול מרכזי הכובד של חמאס בכל רצועת עזה. בכל רצועת עזה, במקום שיש מרכז כובד של חמאס, צה"ל פועל. Israeli military's, uh, Israel's military chief of staff says that the operation in southern Gaza will match its earlier offensive against Hamas in the northern part of the strip. Now, the IDF claims to have killed Hamas's commander of the Shati Battalion with an airstrike in Gaza. They say that the commander, Haytham Kwajwari, directed the militants to carry out raids into southern Israel on October 7th. The Israeli Defense Forces further said that since the beginning of the ground offensive, the troops have discovered more than 800 tunnel shafts in the Gaza Strip. The military said that around 500 of them have already been destroyed, either by setting off large explosives inside or by sealing them. And with the attacks intensifying, the humanitarian horror in Gaza is only worsening. Over 2 million Palestinians face death and devastation across the besieged strip. At least 700 Palestinians have been killed in the past 24 hours. And it is one of the highest daily death tolls since the war began on October 7th. From the north to the south, Palestinians in Gaza say that there is nowhere that is safe for them. The Israeli military targeted the Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza for a second day. The renewed strikes hit the refugee camp on Sunday and several homes were destroyed, killing dozens of people. and more are buried under the public. <laughs> Meanwhile, the injured people were being rushed to Gaza City's Al-Ahali Hospital as Israel ordered more people in crowded southern Gaza to evacuate. And as you can see, bodies were lined up on the front yard of the hospital even as more bodies were brought in. الحقيقة منذ انتهاء الهدنة وبداية العدوان من جديد تلقينا خلال ايام الثلاثة الماضية يعني بما في ذلك هذا اليوم العشرات من الجرحى المصابين المختلفين والمئات من الشهداء في الحقيقة الاصابات في هذه المرة اصعب بكثير مما قبلهن هذه الاصابات هي قصور معقدة مفتوحة تحتاج الى تدخل الى تدخل طبي وعمليات عاجلة كما وصلت عدد كبير من الحالات المصابة في الرأس ومصابة في البطن Thirty-nine Palestinians, including twenty who are badly injured, arrived in Tunisia together with their families on Sunday. They were transported from the Gaza Strip for medical treatment. They had been evacuated through the Rafah border crossing into Egypt. Another flight is scheduled for Tuesday to bring an additional 160 injured people to Tunisia for treatment. And seeing the current situation unfolding in West Asia, 
The Iranian foreign minister has expressed prospects of the war spilling over in face of the Israeli attacks on Gaza. ما از رهبران مقاومت در روز گذشته شنیدیم که در صورت ادامه این وضعیت منطقه از طریق مقاومت وارد یک مرحله جدیدی خواهد شد The Israeli Defense Forces are continuing their large scale air strikes against Hamas militants in the Gaza Strip as the world leaders attempt to bring both parties back to the negotiating table. In the latest, according to a senior Hamas official, resuming talks with Israel on further exchanges of hostages and prisoners must be tied to a cessation of, ag of aggression and a ceasefire. فإننا نؤكد أن استمرار مفاوضات أن استئناف مفاوضات تبادل الأسرى مرهون بوقف العدوان ووقف إطلاق النار وقبل ذلك لا حديث عنه. In a bid to renew the truce, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken held talks with Qatari Prime Minister. Both leaders expressed commitment to renewing the truce while also calling for aid and release of Hamas hostages. The Israeli military, on the other hand, says it has intensified its attack on the Palestinian enclave, adding that militants on every part of the Strip are now on target. This marks a big escalation in the Israeli offensive since the truce collapse. Before the seven-day pause, the deadliest Israeli operations were limited to the northern part of Gaza. צה"ל ממשיך ומרחיב את הפעולה הקרקעית מול מרכזי הכובד של חמאס בכל רצועת עזה. בכל רצועת עזה, במקום שיש מרכז כובד של חמאס, צה"ל פועל. Israel's military chief of staff says that their operation in southern Gaza will match their earlier offensive against Hamas in the northern part of the strip. The IDF claims to have killed Hamas commander of the Shati battalion which, with an airstrike in Gaza. They say that the commander Haitham Khawajiri directed militants to carry out raids into southern Israel on the 7th of October. The Israeli Defense Forces further said that since the beginning of their ground offensive, the troops have discovered more than 800 tunnel shafts in the Gaza Strip. The, militant, the military said that around 500 of them have already been destroyed either by setting off large explosive charges inside or by sealing them. With the attacks intensifying, the humanitarian horror in Gaza is only worsening. Over 2 million Palestinians face death and devastation across the besieged strip. At least 700 Palestinians have been killed in the past 24 hours itself. It is one of the highest daily death tolls since the war began on the 7th of October. From the north to the south, Palestinians in Gaza say there is no place which is safe. The Israeli military targeted the Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza for a second day. Renewed strikes hit the, the refugee camp on Sunday. Several homes were destroyed, killing dozens of people. More are buried under the rubble. Meanwhile, injured people were being rushed to Gaza City's Al Ali Baptist Hospital as Israel ordered more people in crowded southern Gaza to evacuate. Bodies were lined on the front yard of the hospital, even as more bodies were brought in. <laughs> العشرات من الجرحى المصابين المختلفين والمئات من الشهداء في الحقيقة الإصابات في هذه المرة أصعب بكثير مما قبل هند أغلب الإصابات هي قصور معقدة مفتوحة تحتاج تدخل إلى تدخل طبي وعمليات عاجلة كما وصف هذا الكبير من الحالات المصابة في الرأس ومصابة في البطن وإلى ويكون حالات تحتاج إلى تدخل لإنقاذ الحياة 
39 Palestinians, including 20 who are badly injured, arrived in Tunisia together with their families on Sunday. They were transported from the Gaza Strip for medical treatment. They had been evacuated via the Rafah border crossing into Egypt. And another flight is scheduled for Tuesday to bring an additional 160 injured people to Tunisia for treatment. Seeing the situation unfolding in West Asia, the Iranian foreign minister has expressed prospects of the war spilling over in the face of Israeli attacks. Again, these are remarks which have come in from the Iranian front several times in the past as well. در روز گذشته شنیدیم که در صورت ادامه این وضعیت منطقه از طریق مقاومت وارد یک مرحله جدیدی خواهد شد and the israel defense forces are continuing its large scale air strikes against hamas militants in the gaza strip as world leaders attempt to bring both the parties back to the negotiating table. According to a senior Hamas official, resuming talks with Israel on further exchanges of hostages and prisoners must be tied to, and I'm quoting here, cessation of aggression and a ceasefire. <laughs> التوصل إلى تمديد الهدنة الإنسانية واستئناف واستمرار العدوان النازي على شعبنا فإننا نؤكد أن استمرار مفاوضات أن استئناف مفاوضات تبادل الأسرى مرهون بوقف العدوان ووقف إطلاق النار وقبل ذلك لا حديث عنه in a bid to renew the truce, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken held talks with Qatari Prime Minister. Both the leaders expressed the commitment to renewing the truce while also calling for aid and release of Hamas hostages. Well, the Israeli military, on the other hand, says it has intensified its attack on the Palestinian territory, adding that the militants on every part of the Strip are now on target. And this marks a big escalation in the Israeli offensive since the truce collapsed. Before the seven-day pause, the deadliest Israeli operations were limited to northern Gaza. צהל ממשיך ומרחיב את הפעולה הקרקעית מול מרכזי הכובד של חמאס בכל רצועת עזה. בכל רצועת עזה, במקום שיש מרכז כובד של חמאס, צהל פועל. Israel's military chief of staff says that the operation in southern Gaza will match its earlier offensive against Hamas in the northern part of the Strip. Well, the IDF claims to have killed Hamas's commander of the Shati Battalion with an airstrike in Gaza. They say that the commander, Haytham Khwajwari, directed the militants to carry out raids into southern Israel on October 7th. The Israeli Defense Forces further said that since the beginning of the ground offensive, the troops have discovered more than 800 tunnel shafts in the Gaza Strip. The military said that around 500 of them have already been destroyed, either by setting off large explosive charges inside or by sealing them. Now with the attacks intensifying, the humanitarian horror in Gaza is only worsening. Over 2 million Palestinians face death and devastation across the besieged strip. At least 700 Palestinians have been killed in the last 24 hours. And it is one of the highest daily death tolls since the war began on October 7th. From the north to the south, the Palestinians in Gaza say that there is nowhere that is safe for them right now. The Israeli military targeted the Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza for a second day. The renewed strikes hit the refugee camp on Sunday. Several homes were destroyed, killing dozens of people. And more are buried under the rubble. Meanwhile, the injured people were being rushed to Gaza City's Al-Ahali Hospital as Israel ordered more people in crowded southern Gaza to evacuate. 
Bodies were lined up on the front yard of the hospital even as more bodies were brought. العشرات من الجرحى المصابين المختلفين والمئات من الشهداء في الحقيقة الإصابات في هذه المرة أصعب بكثير مما قبله أنت أغلب الإصابات هي قصور معقدة مفتوحة تحتاج تدخل إلى تدخل طبي وعمليات عاجلة كما وصلت عدد كبير من الحالات المصابة في الرأس ومصابة في البطن وإلى ويكون حالات تحتاج إلى تدخل لإنقاذ الحياة 39 Palestinians, including 20 who are badly injured, arrived in Tunisia together with their families on Sunday and they were transported from the Gaza Strip for medical treatment. They had been evacuated through the Rafah border crossing into Egypt. Meanwhile, another flight is scheduled for Tuesday to bring an additional 160 injured people to Tunisia for treatment. And seeing the current situation unfolding in West Asia, the Iranian foreign minister has expressed prospects of the war spilling over in face of the Israeli attacks on Gaza. ما از رهبران مقاومت در روز گذشته شنیدیم که در صورت ادامه این وضعیت منطقه از طریق مقاومت وارد یک مرحله جدیدی خواهد شد. A U.S. destroyer and several commercial ships operating in the Red Sea came under drone and ballistic missile attacks. Now, this is according to the U.S. military as it marks the most significant escalation of a weeks-long military attack on ships operating. In those specific waters. According to American officials, the USS Carney, a naval destroyer, struck a drone that was in the direction, that was inbound in the direction of the ship. They say it was launched from a Houthi controlled part of Yemen. At roughly the same time, the Unity Explorer, a Bahamas flagged UK owned and operated bulk cargo ship, came under a, a ballistic missile attack that landed near the ship. The commercial ship sent a distress call and the Carney moved towards the ship in response. While assessing the damage on the commercial ship, a Panamanian flagged bulk carrier named MV No. 9 reported damage but no casualties caused by the missile from Yemen. While the MV Sophie 2, which, is, which also flies Panama's flag, said it was struck as well but suffered no significant harm. Now, in a statement, the Yemeni armed forces confirmed the attack, saying it launched a missile towards the Unity Explorer and a drone at another commercial cargo ship, saying that the ships were Israeli and that attacks on the country's vessels would continue until Israeli aggression stops against their brothers in the Gaza Strip. نفذت القوات البحرية في القوات المسلحة اليمنية بعون الله تعالى صباح يومنا هذا عملية استهداف لسفينتين إسرائيليتين في باب المندب وهما سفينة يونتي إكسبلورر وسفينة نمبر ناين حيث تم استهداف السفينة الأولى بصاروخ بحري والسفينة الثانية بطائرة مسيرة بحرية وقد جاءت عملية الاستهداف Israel's six-week siege and war on Gaza brought back horrifying memories of the 1948 Palestinian Nakba. If numbers are anything to go by, the numbers of this war have surpassed the statistics from the Nakba 75 years ago. In our next report, we bring you a detailed comparison. Take a look. In May this year, Palestinians marked 75 years of the Nakba, a term which translates to catastrophe, a tragedy in 1948, which still haunts millions who survived while the event may have marked the creation of Israel. The cost of its formation serves as a traumatic reminder for the Palestinians. May 2023 was also the first time that the United Nations commemorated the Nakba anniversary. A move welcomed by Palestinians and Arab allies alike. 
But six months later, Israel's siege on Gaza has brought back the horrific memories of 1948. The scale of devastation and civilians killed by Israeli defense forces mirror the catastrophe that unfolded more than 75 years ago. The numbers speak for themselves. Israel's creation in 1948 triggered a forced displacement of over 750,000 Palestinians. And just like that, the birth of a new country led to an overnight mass exodus that created thousands of refugees. Data also reveals that between 1947 and 1949, 15,000 Palestinians were killed. 75 years on, the human toll in Gaza tells a similar story, only worse. Seven weeks since Israel declared a full-blown war with Hamas, civilians have paid the price in this conflict. The Hamas-controlled Palestinian Health Ministry says more than 15,000 Gazans have already been killed in Israel's military strikes. According to UNRWA's latest situation report on Gaza, 1.8 million Palestinians have been displaced since October 7th alone. The dire humanitarian crisis in Gaza has compelled people around the world to draw comparisons with the catastrophe in 1948. The scenes of buildings flattened in Gaza, piles of corpses and thousands still feared buried under the rubble are what Gazans are referring to as yet another Nakba. Every day we witness a Nakba. Every day we witness a bigger tragedy. Every day there is a new displacement. What you see is merely a small part of the destruction at the hands of this occupation. The human cost in 2023 is fear to surpass what Palestinians have historically lost and endured. And our top focus in world DNA is our continuous coverage of the Israel-Hamas war. In the latest, the Israel Defense Forces are continuing its large-scale airstrikes against Hamas militants in the Gaza Strip. And this is as the world leaders attempt to bring both parties back to the negotiating table. Now, in the latest, according to a senior Hamas official, resuming talks with Israel on further exchanges of hostages and prisoners must be tied to a, quote-unquote, cessation of aggression and a ceasefire.